just a bunch of like snares. It's very interesting, all different stuff, just across the entire keyboard. My name is Cairo, I'm a producer and a composer and I work as an in-house composer at Spotify Audio. Today I'm just going to break down a library that came out recently for Spitfire called What Island by Gaika. The pack itself is, is based off of sounds that Gaika has used in his own music and him and his sound engineers have come up with a library in collaboration with Spitfire Audio. It's almost like a kind of industrial dance hall, lots of nice distorted sounds, and lots of nice crunchy drums, and all sorts of uh, just interesting experimental sounds. The whole concept of the library itself was that all sounds that was used in the library is very like processed, and those processed sounds is what you get out of the package like straight away, so you don't have to add any effects and stuff like that. So it doesn't need too much going on. So this trailer is 45 seconds long, around 44 seconds long at least. And there's two main sections. There's, I like to call like the intro section, and then there's a climax section, which leads up to the end of the trailer. All right, so this is a project. It's quite a minimal project actually. I would say about 20 tracks or so. It just consists of a main lead, some bass, some drums, some percussion, and other kind of elements that add to the track. Rises, there's a drum track, some leads, a bass and that's pretty much it. I always start my tracks with uh, chords. I don't focus too much on the trailer at this point because it's just a starting idea. So once I found a sound that I really enjoyed from the, the library, I made up chords, which is this top line here. The sound I chose from the library was, it's called Space Odd 2021. A nice like spacey sound. It doesn't take too much to make like nice chords out of it. It was just the first sound that stood out to me. I was just trying to find like these key elements of the trailer. Each time the edit changes, as you see as the, the name drops down, I try to get some sort of tempo it's not going to always be 100% correct, but you want to find something that fits as close as possible. Try and tap out each beat and see where it lays. And then once you're hearing the metronome of your project, you'll be able to see how close it is to that trailer. So once I found the tempo, which is 153, I actually did some drums. They're very like chopped, crunchy kind of sounds. So they're not tr your traditional kind of drums. It's a bunch of like snares. It's very interesting, all different stuff, just across the entire keyboard. On every two. You know, just like a typical snare. But it's a very weird, it's not your traditional snare, it's very weird. If you can hear, there's like, I guess you can say it like a static effect. Going like Ch -ch -ch. It's just kind of just like a static sound. So it just plays. So next, I added this kick. It's a very distorted kick. All the kicks in the library are just very, they're not your traditional kicks at all. There we go. These are all kicks. This is the main kick I decided to use. So I wanted to give it like this very like, I don't know how to describe it, this not scary, but almost kind of like there's a fear, like it, it jumps at you. It's quiet. I didn't want it to just be like this very subdued kick. It's like a sudden glitch. At certain beats of the trailer, there was certain things that I wanted to kind of accentuate. Next is just this very strange lead that I found called Smiley Face. It's very, it's very, very strange. I kind of just wanted to add it just to add texture to the overall composition. It's not something you'd, you know, play. So I just added it to every like beat or so.
kind of sucks up, like as every snare hits, it kind of sucks up to like a point and then just cuts out. I just kind of wanted that effect. And I think I made it sure that the release was completely shut off. Those were my main foundations for like the first part of the trailer, just to kind of lead up to the climax at the end. The second part of the trailer is where I added this bass. So these basses I made just to go underneath the main chords, just to give it obviously that oomph, that low end. I didn't add a bass to the first part of the track just because I felt like I wanted it to lead up to something and putting bass at the beginning of a track can sometimes make it feel like there isn't a lead up. So visually from the trailer, there's a lot of these like glitchy elements to the trailer and very just, you know, effect heavy beats and cuts very kind of you know like a lot of duplications a lot of vhs kind of glitchy style and i wanted to kind of choose these sounds based off of that so i want to choose like these very distorty bass heavy sounds also quite spacious sounds and very just like 80s inspired sounds because that's kind of what i enjoy when i make this sort of stuff a lot of the sounds in this pack have these 80s vibes to them for me i always like to have my baseline quite simple foundation i never want it to be the main focal point especially because this this sound is very is very very bass heavy you don't want it to do, be doing too much in terms of um changing melodically it's very you know very distorted very just crunchy very nice and i paired it up towards the end with this I can't really hear it too much because I took the bass out. I think what I ended up doing was going from a very quiet point into a very loud point. So as the trailer gets to the end, it gets louder and louder. It just adds that top end to the bass. I EQ'd out literally all the bass. That's the, the sound with all the bass in it. So everything's EQ'd out just to get that sound, just to get that top end sound. Static key and stuff like that. Next, I got this riser effect. This is what does the main work in terms of that main riser sweep up. So it sounds like this. So, as you can hear, it does a nice crescendo upwards, you know, just to lead up to the end of the track. Usually, with uh, trailers, you want this nice kind of reverb tail at the end. You know, obviously, depending on your style, you can have a hard car for. You know, however you want. It's very short release code because I didn't want it to be too, too long. And just because I wanted the sound to feel just very robotic-y, very not human, if that makes sense. So here's a stab D. This is kind of like the main melody line of the track that ends up being played in this climax section. That's the stabs. Obviously, you can, as you can hear, it's very, very, very reminiscent of, you know, 80s synth music of that time. It's very like, you know, traditional, like Stranger Things-esque, you know, very um, Tron kind of. Yeah, this is the sound that like drew me the most because I, I really wanted that sort of sound. And I ended up adding like, a lot of delay to it. I did this uh, free delay too. This is how it, how it usually sounds. You know, a nice reverb tail, but I wanted a lot of delay. I like adding a lot of delay to my sounds. I like how maybe like 10 seconds into the track, 20 seconds into the track, you can still hear that delay in the background. I like adding that just so it fills out the track a lot more. When writing a trailer, you want to accentuate certain hits of the trailer. So I just added some, um, some different drum effects. So here's just quick. I did this delay on top of the, this actual hit right here. Uh, so this is it without it. I just wanted that nice hit, just just because I thought it, I thought it sounded nice personally. So I added that. Going on to this last last bit here, I added these uh, drums. These are new drums right here. It's a snare and the kick sequence. This sequence is is different from the first sequence. I actually added later to the trailer because I felt that the whole track 
needed drums. At first, I kind of wanted it just to be this pure, melodic, spacey vibe. But I think adding drums to it just gave it that nice punch, that nice kick. And then cutting it off right before the final sweep at the end. Based on the sounds, I actually had to like offset the drums a little bit just to make sure it hits with the trailer. Because again, like I said, when doing a trailer, the tempo doesn't hit exactly all the time. You have to kind of play around with certain timings of different sounds and stuff like that, just to make sure it hits in time. So here it's just simple snare and kick. I didn't add any rhythmic kind of loop or anything like that, just cause uh, I didn't feel like it needed it. As you can hear, very simple. Sometimes uh, with snares, I like to add certain sounds on top of them just to make it a bit more different. I added this effect on top. I also liked it because it had this certain suck effect. I thought that sounded really cool in comparing with the rest of the drums. And here's just a kick. And usually with this kick, there's like a nice like reverb tail end, but because I wanted it to be a straight kick, I took that out and I just EQ'd it a bit. So it just sounds more like a, a regular kick. And then there's a second kick down here. You want to always add variation to the stuff that you're making just to make it sound more interesting. Lastly is this sweep. This isn't from the kit, but I like to add sweeps to my tracks. Again, like I said, I always like that kind of sucking effect. It just gives it this certain bounce. As you can hear. And last but not least, this was a late add to the overall track. This is just kind of this like sub melody lead that I added. And again, it's just Space Odd 2021, which is the same lead, but just played at a high octave. Here I just did some automation with the main uh, dynamics and expression just to mimic and mirror the crescendo upwards towards the end. That's the main bulk of the track pretty much done. For me personally, I like to add just like a nice noise track just to fill out the track. It's very subtle and you're not going to hear it, but it does fill out and it just makes it feel warmer. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of War Island by Gaika. You can find this pack on spitfireaudio.com. My name is Carol. If you want to check out more about myself and my music, uh, you can check the links below. And if you want to find out more about how to produce music, please check out Point Blank Music School in the description below.